Long time listener, first time caller. It's Trisha on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. It's so good to talk to you. I'm sure. What you're saying is a great service to the people, and the people should understand that. Dude, dude, two Big Macs for three bucks? Are you kidding me? It's fantastic. You answer to me, and I will interrupt you anytime I please, up to and including hanging up the phone. Hang up the phone, then. Come All get- right, I will. I'm preparing the men for the reality of the future, that, that women today are scandalous, and they will lie and do whatever they have to do to get what they want, up to and including they see a guy who looks the part, and they want to have a baby with him because he has the right eye color, or because he's built right, or because uh, the family has money, or whatever. And men must, men must fight this resolutely. They must fight against being dragged into responsibilities they don't want. And I'm telling them how to do it. They're just talking smack because Margarito is a great fighter. I think this fight was too close to Christmas. He had all the tamales and the tequila Oh, still. stop. He didn't have time to no, work it come out. Come on. Come on, Irwin. Please. It's true. Come on. They should have waited a little longer after Christmas because, stop I mean. Stop it. And then yeah, you're kidding, says, right? Too close to Christmas. Too many tamales. That's why he lost. Now we have uh, the children of the children. I know. Yeah, we've got the uh, mother who at 16 had a baby, and now her 14-year-old little slutty slut slut is now now she's pregnant. 30-year-old mom and 46-year-old grandma and 15-year-old little slut, uh, they they go down to Planned Parenthood, or they they, what? They go and apply for welfare? Well, what the hell? Well, I don't understand why people get upset at me when I bring this up, and I know the reason. They think if I go on the air and say, oh, 85,000 layoffs today, that it's going to hurt their business. So I should be Pollyanna, and I should be on the radio pretending that everything is just great, that I should do what George W. Bush used to do, say we're not in a recession, say things aren't as bad as they seem, say we're just seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, say uh, things are going to get better in the next quarter, the next half, the next year. I'm not going to do it. I refuse. I refuse. From Hollywood. Stay calm, okay? Let's not lose our heads. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's going to work. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you. We're tuning in to the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones on this Friday at 1 800 5 and 800 Tom. Anything goes here at 1 800 5 800 866. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, um, I had a crazy question. I'm, I'm 22 and I'm, I'm going to be a Border Patrol agent. Now, my girlfriend happens to be an illegal immigrant. <laughs> Are you serious? I am dead serious, Tom. Dead. How did you? Dead. How did you meet her? You were you were busting some people, and you said, "Hey, this is one hot illegal alien." One hot illegal alien. <laughs> no, I actually met her uh, at one of my previous jobs uh, when I was younger. I worked at a GameStop. I was a manager for GameStop. She came in. I was like, fell in love, whatever. Um, became a border patrol agent, and she's illegal, and we can't get married or anything. Let me ask you a question, Steve. I'm just curious. Uh, uh, to get that job, don't you have to take some kind of oath? Yeah, um, you know, background check, investigate, you know, et- integrity, everything. Like, I didn't lie. They asked me, you know, if I had a girlfriend. And I was like, yeah, but they didn't ask me, you know, is she an illegal immigrant? Is she not? And I didn't know she was an illegal immigrant until after I became an agent. What country is she from? Mexico. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, and she and the reason she cannot become a, a resident is what? Uh, her parents brought her over when she was two, and that's it. Like she's been illegal ever since. Her, her whole family's illegal. Her whole that's family. amazing. That's amazing that a two-year-old, ultimately, when she grows older, gets punished for what her parents did. It, yeah. It's outrageous that she can't be treated as a separate individual. I mean, certainly, uh, it was not her decision to break the law. It was her parents. I mean, she's a good kid, Tom. She doesn't, you know, she's not a freeloader. She's a hard worker. She's worked hard. She's going to community college, you know. But uh, I'm kind of, like, torn in between because, you know, there's times where I'm like, I should deport my own girlfriend. 
Well, that's what you're supposed to do, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really, I'm an inch away, Tom, from turning her in, and I just wanted to know what you think. Wait a minute, you're an inch away from turning her in. Now, let me ask you a question. Did she do something to uh, piss you off? I mean, why no, would you no, be doing No, no, it's just, I, I used to be a soldier, Tom. You know, I've been in Iraq. I've been in Afghanistan. You know, I'm a veteran. I'm a combat veteran. You know, I have integrity. This is my country. So sometimes I'm like, I have to choose between my country and, you know, the girl I'm with, I guess you could say. Did you ever tell her you were pissed off that she wasn't honest with you about that? Uh, I wasn't even pissed, Tom. To be honest, I was shocked. It's like somebody hit me with a sledgehammer because, you know, we, we had been together for almost a year until she told me. She was like, you know, there's something I want to tell you. And I'm like, okay, maybe you got a kid or something. She was like, nah, it's a little worse than that. Well, and, uh, here's the thing. <clears throat> Let's try to look at it from her point of view. Um Clearly. Uh, did, did she know what you did for a living? Were you a Border Patrol agent at the time you found this out? Uh, I had just started. Just okay. started. When you start dating somebody, you don't know how much you could trust them. Do you tell somebody everything about yourself when you're first dating them? No, she didn't know I was an agent. I didn't say anything about that. Right, so you didn't tell her everything, and she didn't tell you everything. Yeah. And the reason is the same reason you didn't tell her. You never know who you're talking to when you first start dating somebody. Yeah. So now, now here. here's the thing. I, now, let me tell you what my perspective on this is. You, you took an oath, and you, you know, you're supposed to uphold it. But by the same token, uh, you would have had a responsibility that once you knew this to end the relationship at that time, but you didn't. No. So you I'm, continued I'm, I'm, riding that pony uh, long <clears throat> and hard. I mean, I haven't cheated the system, Tom. Like, I'm not going to hook up her family. You know, I'm not like that. No, I understand that. But <clears throat> you, you took an oath. If you know about something like this, you're supposed to act. But by the same token, you knew about this and did nothing and enjoyed the benefits of not doing anything. So now to do it. Seems kind of unscrupulous, you know, like, okay, uh, you've ridden that pony good and hard, and now you're ready to send it out to pastor. Oh, Tom, you make me sound like a bad guy. Well, in a way you are, because you took an oath and you violated your oath, and now, belatedly, now you want to all of a sudden uh, be honest. So, I mean, should I leave her, Tom? What do you think, honestly, like? I'll do what you say, Tom. I'm a long-time listener, you know. I will tell you what I would do if it were me. And this would be violating my oath, but by the same token, it would be a, tr a way to try to resolve this in my own mind. I would tell her, I'm a Border Patrol agent, and I am sworn to uphold the law, and I took an oath. And uh, I should have told you this when you told me you were an illegal alien, but I didn't. So here's what I'm going to do. I I would recommend you move somewhere else, <laughs> go away, and I'm going to pretend we never met. And that's it. Nice. That would be my compromise, and it would be a compromise because you're really giving me a moral dilemma here. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I know, some. you know, what's that? I don't want to marry her. I listen to you all the right. time, so I don't, I'm not going to marry her, you know, especially since she's illegal. But she gave you some good banging and clanging action there, and so yeah. rather than punishing her in a way that she'll be gone forever probably, if not 10 years, um, the best thing to do is to tell her, you know what, how about I lose your number? How about maybe you go to some other part of town? Because I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to ruin my career. But I also don't want to hurt you. Because she hasn't done anything to hurt you. Yeah. That's true, Tom. That's true. You're right. You're all great. Right. Can you take so, me out of Kobe style, Tom? Yes, Steve. Yes, I can. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Tom like it. one 800 5 tom one 800 5 866 The Tom Likas Show. It's 
It's the Tom Likas Show. With shorter commercial breaks. Fewer commercials. And more telephone calls than ever. We rip through them. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. one 800 5800 Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Hey, I got a question about my job. Um, currently, I work at UPS, and I, I'm in the union right now, and I, you know, I have job security and everything, but I'm offered a, a promotion to become a supervisor, and supervisor is not union, so I'm outside of the union, and I need your advice whether or not to, like, what would, what would you do in this economic time? Well, what are the pay and uh, benefit differential? Well, like, right now, I'm about, I'm about $10 an hour right now, ten fifty, and I work about 27 hours a week. And then uh, that's that's what the union and then a supervisor gets paid fifteen dollars an hour, and they're guaranteed a minimum of twenty seven hours. But the thing is, like, with being in the union, great. Like, I have job security and like the benefits with the union are really good. Like, in in a, in a year, I'll have. Did you say you make ten dollars an hour? Yeah, I make ten dollars an hour right now because I just started working at UPS. But I've I've been working there for about four months. Can I ask why you're not in college? I am in college. What are you doing? I'm uh, studying business. Really? What college? Yeah. I'm at Chaffee College right now, but I want to transfer to San Diego State. Okay, good for you. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, job security, look, we're talking about short term. Yeah. Definitely. Job security short term is very important. Very important, and supervisors are more likely to get, uh, to get the axe. Yes. Or supervisors are more likely to step down. Uh-huh. Right, Roy? Uh, yes, right, you're more likely to step down than people who uh, are in the union. It's just like, I, I, I can use the money right now and like, save up for college rather than barely make like 200 a week right now and really not have a lot of money to save up and spend. Right, but the most important thing is getting through college and having that job available to yeah. you with the flexibility you have and knowing you'll have that uh, the benefits that I'm sure you get some decent benefits. Oh, I get I get amazing benefits there. Like right. they pay they pay for my college, they have uh, full medical and in like nine more months I'll have full medical for everything and like just the way they treat you there is really good. And doesn't uh doesn't UPS have some kind of a uh, 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 profit sharing, or you know, they vest you with shares, or that yeah, kind of thing. Uh, at the at the end of every quarter, we have the option to buy stock for UPS, and we get it. We get it at a ten percent discount at the lowest point of the quarter. Well, right now that could be really good for you because oh, UPS yeah. is UPS is it's about it's about forty forty eight dollars a share right now. It fluctuates, you know, depends. Like forty eight is about fifty four dollars a share. So right. I'm trying to save up right now. So at the quarter, I could get stock and. You have to save it for a minimum of a year, but, I mean, I'm looking for long-term with stock and not short-term with that company. Well, if you can stand doing the job and you like it and uh, you're happy with the money and the benefits you're currently getting, I would say the security is more important than anything. All right. Hey, can you take me out travel style? Yes, of course. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Sarah, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing okay. I am. I've only listened to your show a couple of times. I'm not going to lie. First time calling though. Why? But uh, like, I was talking to my best friends, and they're listening to your show right now, and they said I should call in talk to you about my situation. Right. We spent 30 seconds talking about that part. So when are you going to get to the actual point? <laughs> um, I got dumped like two weeks ago. Right. By my boyfriend of about two years. And we were living together at his parents' house. And like, I came home from work. At his night. parents' house? Let me yeah. ask you a question, dear. Uh, 22 years old. Why do you need to live at some guy's parents' house? We Why do you need to have a boyfriend? What? We were in an apartment. And you're such losers you couldn't afford to keep paying the rent, so you moved into his parents' house? No, our roommates broke the lease. Right. But the point is you couldn't afford an apartment without having roommates. 
Right. And so you had to move into his parents. And why do you need a boyfriend, may I ask? I don't need one. I've well, never yeah. been a girl that needed one until well, I Well, then if you didn't need one, why do you have one? Well, I don't have one anymore. He broke up with me. Yeah, but why? Did, why you wanted to have one, and you wanted it to keep going. Why? Because it, when it was good, it was good. But why did he need to be a boyfriend? Why couldn't you just have a friend with benefits or something? That's what he was. No, he wasn't. You live with him. He was my friend with benefits for about... A friend with benefits does not live with you. A friend with benefits has his own place. We you live in your place, he lives in his place. Eight months. What? We only lived together for like eight months. I don't months. care how long you lived together. You're only 22. You were 21 when it started. You're too young to be doing that. Uh, Why can't you just have fun? Well, I don't know. That's why I didn't want him listening to you. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Because <laughs> he's and only is 21. That why, is that why he dumped you? No. So he, he, figured it, he figured it out on his own. No, he got jealous. Jealous of what? Me. Doing what? He's an extremely jealous controlling Right, person. and you have male friends and probably a MySpace or a Facebook or a Twitter or something like that, right? Yeah, MySpace and Facebook. There we go. <laughs> and why would you need those if you have a boyfriend? And the answer is because you want as much male attention as you can possibly get. Look at me! I've got 817 friends! And no, 815 yeah, of them are guys no, who want to I've see me naked! In, no, huh? I've lived in three different states and I have friends from... Blobby, blobby, blue. But the thing was open to any guy who wanted to sign up. And there were all these guys who wanted to hammer you, and you just signed. Sure, you could be my friend. Uh huh. No, but I had friends that were his friends, too. Like, I don't care. You also had friends who were strangers, strange men who wanted to boff you. And you were perfectly happy to say, but they're just friends. Can't a girl have friends? Of course. And you say, well, I can't believe how jealous he is. You got exactly what you deserved. You got exactly what you deserved. I, I want to give, I want to stand up to this guy, standing ovation. Good work. Dumping your ass. Good work. So what was your question, Donna? Well, I guess you answered it. Just because of my age, I shouldn't be with a boyfriend, and I was going to tell you the situation, and now he's trying to, like, buy me back. Like Buy you back? Uh-huh. You don't like, need a boyfriend, dear. I don't need one, but now he wants me back. and he Now says, you can have sex with all the guys on Twitter who uh, want, or MySpace, wherever, uh, who want to have you. Now you can sample all of them. No, it's not the guys on MySpace. You can send them the lingerie with. pictures you've been waiting to send them, or maybe you have already sent them. I don't know. It's guys I work with, not guys on... Whatever. <laughs> I know your type, dear. I can't believe how jealous he got. Just because I got 812 friends on Facebook, he got jealous. No, he got jealous of the people I actually hung out with. Yeah, well, again, you're playing games, and he dumped you, and you got what you deserved. It, it, too bad he doesn't have the balls to make it stick. No. Well, now, well, what's his problem, then, if he wants me to come back? What do we care about what his problem is? I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to you. Yeah, great. I can't answer for his problem, but I can answer for yours. If you want him back, you're uh, the little girl who hasn't matured yet. I understand. I've I've dated many of you. You've seen many of us. I've dated many of you. Still now? Oh yeah. Oh well, if you can do it, you can do it. I can do it because I have money, power, and fame, dear. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. Right? Right. No, you're right. Definitely. All right. So uh, I imagine you're going to go back with him after you sit here and uh, belittle him for wanting you back. Then you will go back with him, won't you? No, I don't think so. Hmm. All right. Have you uh, gotten uh, Have you uh, gotten with any of those guys yet that have been wanting to get with you on MySpace? Um. Uh, yes, you have, haven't you? Not the guys I work with. Somebody I've been friends have with. Have you for gotten a long with the time. guys? Have you gotten with the guys you work with? I haven't slept with them. Not yet. But no. you're about to. This weekend. <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> 
There we go. Well, all it takes is that Super Bowl party and uh, one too many Jägermeisters and suddenly be like, I couldn't believe it. I wasn't planning on sleeping with them, but I went to the Super Bowl party and we were watching the game and then one thing led to another and I couldn't believe it. I woke up, my panties were off and I could I can't believe I did that. Oh, no, I believe it when I do it. I can't oh. believe it. He's going to think I'm a slut. <laughs> Laugh it up there, sister. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Where you hear us now six days a week. Saturdays, 2 to 6. Will you be here tomorrow? Let's make a pact. You'll be here tomorrow from 2 to 6 p.m. And then you'll follow it up with a little Monday through Friday from 3 to 8 p.m. as you head home on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you don't live in SoCal or you can't get us on the radio, you promise me you'll go to blowmeuptom.com. You'll click on the Listen Live button, and then you'll hear our show live. And by the way, a glutton for punishment would also uh, throw in the tasting room with Tom Likas. Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. On 97.1 FM Talk and at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Natalie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Natalie. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Well, I heard some of the stories about um, people either being involved or being an illegal immigrant, and I just wanted to share my story, maybe give them some, some sight into the situation. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, I married my husband maybe two years ago. And uh, we knew his situation. He's an illegal immigrant. And I'm uh, born born here in the U.S. I'm a citizen. And we filed, put in his papers probably like a month after we got married just to get everything rolling, see maybe within a year everything would be done. And nothing has still happened. It's even more difficult, actually, than it was before. They're actually saying now that there's a possibility, like a punishment type thing, that before they even say yes or no, that he will be approved, he actually has to go out to Mexico and he has to stay there from any time from six to ten years. And that's kind of difficult seeing as we have a little girl and everything for him to just up and leave his family. And then if they say no, he actually has to stay out there. Yeah. So that's the hardest thing about everything. And I'm I'm trying to get my teaching degree and everything. And I'm working full time and going to school and even him to help find to get a job or anything is difficult, especially how the economy is right now. So it's, I just want to let people know, you know, it isn't easy on anybody and even the situation. It's just, it's just really hard right now. Yes. Uh, which, uh, of course leaves you two possibilities. One that you, uh, uh, you know, be very careful about your feelings when you fall in love with somebody who is not a citizen of the country where you live. Number two, just bang those people who don't actually have a relationship with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't even get that. You know, I know some people who get into false marriages is to get their papers and everything. And even though we have a daughter, it doesn't help at all. It's like, okay, so they might have paid you a couple more bucks just to have a baby. And it's like, trust me, you don't get married and put up with people's crap just so you can get some money. <laughs> So. And uh, the reason you had a kid so young, what was that again? You were hoping it would help you become, uh, you help your boyfriend become a citizen? Oh, no. She was actually, the doctors told me that um, it'd be really unlikely, down near impossible for me to get pregnant. And um, I was taking birth control since I was like 17 because of some physical issues I had. And they told me I wouldn't be able to. So in one thing... Well, like the couple weeks later after the doctor told me that, next thing you know, I'm pregnant. So, really? Yeah, it was actually uh, a good surprise. It was uh, unexpected, maybe untimed or whatever. But I always wanted to be a mom, so I can't can't complain. Yeah, but you know the thing I mean? is, always wanting to be a mom is one thing. But why would you want to be a mom at such a young age? Why wouldn't you want to enjoy your life a bit first? Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. But that I, is, I well, always, that's the way I look at it. I, I would not want to be a parent uh, if I were 21, 22, 23, 19. Are you kidding? No way. No way. Yeah, but I, I was like, well, it could either not happen ever. And 
Yeah, Maybe. what happens What happens if uh, your daughter's dad can never see her again? Yeah, I know. That I mean, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. Yeah. Hopefully right? that doesn't happen. Well, let's hope a lot of things don't happen. Yeah. I just want to, like, it's not that much easier. Some people say, you know, just get married with the U.S. citizen, and it's, it isn't that much easier. <laughs> it's been almost two years, and it's still nothing. Well, it depends upon the conditions under which, like, for example, the caller earlier, whose parents had applied repeatedly and uh, could not uh, could not get what they wanted. Now she, as an adult, is shut out. Yeah, that's poor thing, I swear. And she had, it wasn't even her fault. That's no, she didn't decide to break the law and come in here as an illegal alien. Her parents did that. Yeah, and it's sad because some, some of these kids, they come in here and they make their life and they want to actually do something unlike some other people and they can't. It's really heartbreaking. I agree with you. Natalie, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Fabian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. Sounds good. Yeah, man, I've been a long-time listener, you know, a few years. And I was with the chick for about five years. And, you know, I never took your advice. I finally grew a pair of, I can't say, but... Balls. I left, you know, yeah. I left her. And, then, you know, I never thought... And the thing is, though, that I left her because she put her hands on me about two times. Twice. And, you know, her mom knew about it. She did it one time in a family party, and I just kind of said, you know what, I'm not putting up with this anymore. And I've known her since high school. Right now I'm 21. So, you know, I finally decided to leave her, and I said, well, you know, maybe things are not going to go as good for me, you know. Next thing you know, I met some chick, you know, a few weeks later. I Why do you need Can I ask you a question? Why do you need a girlfriend? Well, you know what, I kind of figured it out. I don't, you know. Like, I've been listening to your show, and, you know, you don't need a girlfriend. You just need somebody to, that you do on the weekend. So you say, hey, you know what, come on over, you know, do what you got to do, and see you later. You know, that's what I do now, man. I really do. I, that's what I do. You know, I go to work, come home, call a few chicks up, you know. Whoever comes through first, they come through. That's what you, you got to do. And I do what I do, but you know what, man? You, you're the man. You, you say that all it is. You don't play around. I'm going to say that. You know what? And... I never figured myself, you know, like I'm telling you, I met this chick, you know, I've ended up doing her and her friend, best time of my life. You know, like, you know, I'm, I'm just glad I took your advice. I would have, I hope I would have taken it sooner, you know, but all I got to say, man, you're the man, and thanks, you know. Thank you. Out. I appreciate the call. Uh, John in Pittsburgh, listening to our online stream, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, you know, you, you've been commenting on that lady who had the, what, the octuplets. Um, you've had a couple shows before commenting she on She had them by design, by the way. That was not a happy yes. surprise. She planned that. Yes, uh, you, you've also commented on the, uh, the idiot lady who in Arkansas, I think it is, who has like the 18 kids. Uh, and, you know, these other people who do these same things. I really think you're looking at the, this in the wrong way for two reasons. And I really want to take it fast on this. Uh, first, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, we have this huge entitlement problem. You know, the, the baby boomers are going to retire soon, and they're basically going to swamp the system with all these Social Security claims and Medicare claims, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these, late, these people who are doing this are really providing us with a service because, you know, the more kids they have, the more taxpayers they'll be. But they're not because in the, in the next 18 years, these kids are going to be on food stamps, welfare, Medicare. Uh, they're going to be uh, using up governmental services like there's no tomorrow. Well, yeah, but th 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 this whole system is a Ponzi scheme, and the only way to keep it going is for them to keep having more kids. I don't agree. I think if they want to have more kids, they should uh, they should be like Domino's Pizza. They bake one, and then they deliver it in 30 minutes or less to somebody who's waiting to get it. I don't think, uh, by the way, for the good of those kids, nobody should have 14 kids. Nobody. No, I don't think so either. If that way, it, but, it, it, okay, that didn't convince you. I think this really will. Uh I'm, you're a smart person. You're probably also aware of this. Uh, throughout the past 60 to 70 years, uh, the birth rate in industrialized countries has really plummeted uh, to the effect that in places like Germany and Russia, uh, it's actually below replenishment rate. They're actually the population is getting older quicker and quicker. What this means for us guys is that the available pool of women 
to us guys as we get older is going to shrink. Oh, no, it's, it's the exact opposite. Uh, women live longer than guys. So the, the, the number of men available to women will shrink. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but uh, you know, when, when I get to you know, be 45, 50, 55, when I'm really in the prime of my life, I'm going to competing for all these 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, and 20-year-olds, of which there will be fewer numbers. On the one hand, that's true. But on the other hand, uh, you're going to have all the cougars and all the 35, 40-year-olds, the milfs and all that. There's going to be more and more of them with no guys. Yeah, but I don't want them. When I'm, when I'm well, 45 years old and I have a bunch of money, I don't want them. Well, I, you know what? <laughs> I, I don't want to pay my tax money. <laughs> so you can have a steady supply of young, new meat. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you're not going to have kids. Not, I mean, I'm not either. I'm fixed. So really, and truly, the future for you is, you know, it's uh, worrying about that. Is, you know, it, it's kind of a moot point. I mean, you don't have to worry about that because you're rich now, and you're basically living, living, you know, living life. I have to worry about the future. Yeah, <laughs> and, so John, and, you know, John so, speaking of the future, you're calling from Pittsburgh. Who's going to win the Super Bowl on Sunday? Oh, hopefully not. Hopefully not the Steelers. I hate the Steelers. Are you tired of hearing about the Steelers? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not rooting for the, for the Steelers. I hate the Steelers. I'm not, I'm not a Pittsburgh native. Uh, I actually moved here uh, several years ago. Are you rooting um, for the Arizona Cardinals, or are you just not a football fan? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not rooting. Neither of them are my teams. I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm actually from Detroit, <laughs> and uh, I was one of those well, guys. Well, your team isn't going to be getting in for the next 25 years or so. so uh, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be alive by the time my team gets in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, uh, I mean, I, I mean, really, truly, I'm, I think I might be done with the Lions. I mean, it, this was just, this year was just pathetic. I mean, if you like, if you, if there's anybody from the Lions listening, uh, just do us a favor and just drive off the bridge. <laughs> just, just drive off the, uh, you know, off the bridge. You know, going into yes, and uh, hire Matt, and, and, and hire Matt Millen as your uh, chauffeur. You know what I'm saying? Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. A Tom like his show. Tom like a show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Why don't we telephone Tom? Tom like his show. Don't forget tomorrow two to six p.m. Our Saturday show. Be here tomorrow two to six p.m. It's the fastest growing arm of our empire. The Saturday program on the Tom like his show. And now joining us from Tampa Bay, Florida, home of Super Bowl forty three, is CBS Radio News correspondent. Steve Futter. Steve, uh, I heard uh, someone say, and you can correct this if yep. it's not true, that um, contrary to other Super Bowls where you usually have thousands of yutzes coming in from uh, other parts of the country, yep. spending the week uh, bathing yep. themselves uh, mm -hmm. on the beach and what have yep. you, that uh, there just aren't that many people there this week, that everybody's going to come in this weekend and make this a quick, cheap, down and dirty trip. I think there's a point to that. You know, there's a couple things going against this Super Bowl. Uh, first of all, Tampa is, does not necessarily draw that many people by itself. It's not like a Miami where you have South Beach. It's not like, uh, you know, if you, if you have a Super Bowl in Los Angeles, if we ever get large enough to have a uh, football team again yes. in L.A., uh, L.A. draws a certain crowd. San Diego is always a great place for a Super Bowl. So Tampa is not necessarily – and New Orleans is a great place for a Super Bowl. So you don't really have that draw. Number two, on – paper at least this is not a compelling matchup even though there's some interesting storylines you know the Steelers trying to become the first team to win six Super Bowls and the the Cardinals you know a, a doormat or, or just, certainly not thought of as a a playoff team for so many years they haven't won a thing since 1947 when they were the Chicago Cardinals so it, it, the, the matchup is certainly compared to last year when you had the Patriots trying to become the first undefeated team against the New York Giants this match up doesn't on paper seem as compelling and number three the economy to some degree as well so those are the three things working against it there are lots of things going on here but uh, not quite as much as we've had in past Super Bowls they still have the parties but they don't have the Playboy party they don't have the Sports Illustrated party so they, people have cut back a bit now do we know if NBC I read this this week and I was amazed NBC had not sold all the spots in the Super Bowl 
Yeah, my understanding as of yesterday, and this has come from other colleagues of mine, not directly from NBC, is that NBC as of yesterday had two more slots to fill. I am assuming they were each 30-second slots. So they have virtually sold out. They expect to sell out. Uh, you know, they're missing some of the traditional sponsors. General Motors pulled out. Federal Express pulled out. These are two sponsors that have been on many Super Bowls, but they will not be there this year. But they have replacements. There's this place called Cash for Gold, where you send in your gold for cash. A uh, bit of a sign of the times, I guess. They will be advertising. Denny's, I think it's its first uh, Super Bowl appearance. So they have virtually sold out the Super Bowl, and the ads are going anywhere I hear from 2.5 to $3 million for a 30-second commercial. But were they not trying to sell these spots, if I recall correctly, for 3.5? You may be right on that one, Tom. I am not aware of it, but you may be right. They may have had to uh, cut back a bit, but uh, I, I still think NBC is going to do okay on this. Wow. So uh, who is there? Uh, the usual craziness uh, between the media and the players, I imagine. Yeah, and then, uh, is it crazy or no? It's crazy, but again, not as crazy as uh, past Super Bowls. You don't have the uh, the draw that you had last year. There are celebrities here, but I would not say as many. And, uh, you know, it's going to be the game is what you're going to remember this one for. You know, Tampa's had other Super Bowls, too. I remember the last time I was here for a Super Bowl was Baltimore against the New York Giants. You know what, Tom? I sort of had the same feeling. It wasn't like a magical draw either. Uh, you know, some sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it depends on the city. Sometimes it depends on the matchup. And uh, I, I don't think, again, on paper, this is a compelling matchup. Well, I, there are reasons to make it a compelling matchup, if anybody would think about it. For example, these are two teams that are, they don't call it this in football, they, it's more a hockey thing, but these are two of the original 12 teams. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, they, uh, Pittsburgh goes back many years. The Cardinals, in their first incarnation, the Chicago Cardinals, go back uh, way back, I think, to the 20s. Of course, they have not been in a championship game since they were the Chicago Cardinals. There was a long period that they were nothing. You know, they were the St. Louis Cardinals would make the playoffs, but uh, never made the championship game, and uh, they, they never made it to the championship in St. Louis. But now in Arizona, they are at the uh, the, the ultimate game in the National Football League. I, you know, I think they have a good chance. They have these two players who obviously, if they have a great day, uh, the Cardinals have a good chance. Kurt Warner, who was supposed to, supposedly a washed-up quarterback, you know, he had a, a great few years with the St. Louis Rams, led them to a Super Bowl, but he was supposedly there as a backup quarterback, but he's led the team all year, and you have this amazing uh, receiver, Larry Fitzgerald, who could be you know, the next superstar in the National Football League, maybe he is already. He is just an amazing performer, and if those two get clicking together, the Cardinals could win this game. They are the under dog, but uh, not by much. I think it's a seven-point uh, difference right now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, did not do all that well uh, no. this year. They fired their coach, John yeah. Gruden. There's a lot of controversy about that. Have you been hearing about that at the Super Bowl? A bit. I mean, the, the Bucks are still a big story here for the locals, and, uh, you know, some of the players uh, speaking out against John Gruden. Uh, not the easiest coach to deal with, and, you know, he, he wants his players to give it their all, and uh, sometimes when you want your players to do that, you say things or act a certain way that doesn't go along with what the players want. Another thing I heard is yeah. that the demand for tickets isn't what it used to be. No, absolutely not. And again, partially because of the city, partially because of the matchup, and partially because of the economy. You know, listen, last yeah, year was the wait a minute. They played a Super Bowl in Detroit. And, and the demand for tickets there was way more than what they have this year. From but what Tom, I understand. Tom, it is they still have demand for tickets. If you have a, if you bought a ticket for face value, which I think is around four hundred bucks, uh, you can still get plenty of money for it. You just aren't going to get as much as you got in the past. For example, sometimes in in some previous Super Bowls, you could get you know three thousand dollars for a ticket like that. Now you may get fifteen hundred. So you know instead of making. Ten times as much or nine times as much, you'll make four times as much. So there is still a market. It just isn't as big. Interesting. And uh, there's been all this talk about a one-second commercial from Miller High Life, yeah, obviously. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, well, you don't even need the commercial. I mean, just I the fact that people are... We've talked about it so much that it's it's worked. It's been a very clever ploy. They've had all the uh, stories about the one-second commercial, and uh, that that's one of the gimmicks, of course. That if you're advertising on the Super Bowl just to get some buzz about what you're going to do is free publicity, and uh, it's worked in this case. Do we have any idea how much uh, Miller paid for that one second to NBC? 
Uh, not sure. I mean, if you divide it, what would be thirty seconds? Uh, thirty seconds for three yeah, about a hundred thousand dollars if if it was done on a prorated yeah. basis. You know what? They, they might charge a bit more for a premium like that. I don't know. They usually don't allow a one second commercial, as you know. I mean, hell, if I get a one second commercial, I'll advertise the show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If I can pay a hundred thousand, I'll do it myself. Yeah, I, I'll join you, Tom. There we go. We'll do it Fantastic. together. We have a joint, uh, mutual plan here. Sounds good to me. Okay. Of course, if we both did it, we'd probably have to do a two-second commercial, one second for me and one for you. I can live with that. That's fine. Now, I imagine one of the uh, perks of uh, your job is you'll go to the game on Sunday. Is that right? Yeah, Tom, I, I have to cover the game, so I have to be there, Tom. Boo hoo hoo Hey, and... someone has to do it, that old cliche. You like that one? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about those Tampa strip clubs? Have you been uh, rolling through you those? Know, I heard today, I didn't realize, I mean, I knew they had the strip clubs uh, here. Do they have more, I heard the line, they have more strip clubs in Tampa than McDonald's? Well, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Tampa really, although I don't think it's the the, the corporate headquarters, but I think it's the home of more Hooters than anywhere in the country, for why, sure. Why are strip clubs so, I mean, why is this such a big uh, thing going on here? I mean, you're... I, I would think you might know the answer. Well, I think that's a Sunbelt thing. You know, Dallas also is very big on yeah. uh, strip clubs. Uh, so is Atlanta. Uh, there's definitely a Sunbelt uh, relationship. Yeah. Well, they have them here. I mean, I drive by them all the time. Now, now, as a reporter, why are you driving by? Why aren't you stopping in there and getting the full story? If I was doing a story on that, I would uh, well, have to stop in there, of course. I'm, but, of course, you don't know what the story is. Maybe when you go in, you find out what the story is. The investigative reporting you're suggesting. You, we, you know what? We need to get the full story. <laughs> <on the camera. laughs> uh, maybe we can post some of the uh, investigative journalism on our website. That would be another uh, segment on your show maybe next week. All right, uh, Steve Arino, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for your in the game, Tom. Uh, I am picking Arizona, but rooting for Pittsburgh. Okay. There we go. We'll see what happens. Steve Futterman, correspondent for CBS Radio News. The Tom Likas Show.